The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. Ujin Kwon is here. And, uh... Hello, everyone. My name is Dexter Williams. I will also be participating in this webinar. Dexter is a main developer of the face graphic user interface site. And myself is a mainly uh, the engine side developer. So hopefully we can bring some fun here. Okay. We have uh, 23 so still people coming. And uh, just go ahead. Okay. So in this webinar, we're gonna cover uh, face basics, talking, assuming you have uh, some basic knowledge and uh, corona and the field effect of the high voltage transmission line. We're just focusing on the face program, okay? And uh, talk about what is face is about face development history and what makes the face as unique and what's the same features and talk about the application area next text are going to talk about the graphic user interface and uh, how to quickly master the GUI site and uh, the last one, we're going to present example cases and the validations we performed through the course of the development. And the last section, we're going to have a yeah, to you guys about uh, any concern or questions and would like to answer. So, Face basics, what the face is doing is field under corona performance is an important consideration when you're designing and operating high voltage transmission lines. And evaluating the overall environment effect of HVAC, DC, or AC, DC hybrid power lines, uh, <coughs> namely audible noise, radio interference, corona loss, static field, and the magnetic field. Iron field computation is one of the big issue. Uh, face is able to handle old ionized field computations, including iron field, iron current, and iron charge. Uh, it also produces lateral profiles that can be specified by the users. That is all about face and uh, <clears throat> development of a face program is uh, started at the Mantaba Hydro in early 1980s. Exactly, I remember it's 1981. <clears throat> face development and validation were continued at uh, Manitoba Hydro International uh, from 1987 to 1995. Uh, <clears throat> after that, it was uh, used at the Manitoba Hydro System Planning and Testament Consulting Company. Uh, I remember it came to me in I believe it's about April 2006. And uh, I worked about one and a half year to improve the face program. Significant improvement include radio interference computation uh, and ionized field computation. We'll talk about details, this stuff later. And in 2016 to now, we're mainly focused on the graphic user interface design and development. And finally, it's evolved to a commercial product right now.
So what's the face is different from other programs? What's the, you know, the, the main feature the face can deliver to users? <clears throat> it's quickly predict field and the corona performance of AC, DC, or AC, DC hybrid power lines. Here, we have to emphasize the AC and DC hybrid cases. And uh, it uses high order image method for the field computation, especially for the conductor surface gradient uh, computations. Also, internally, all the subconductor in the bundle treated as separate conductors. <coughs> we also implemented uh, the, the genetic functions developed by APRI, BPA, and EDF, Iraq, I believe, uh, some else, something else, uh, for user selection through the GUI. Most advanced radio interference computation, which is a semi analytical method combined with frequency domain model transfer, te transfer technique. So, through the main idea, it, uh, using the frequency domain model transform technique is to separate or decouple the transmitter line into a separate one so we can apply generator function developed by the Logic Institute, like APRI, BPA, EDF, etc. And uh, we also implemented high efficient and fast solution method for the ionized field computations. And uh, it also can easily handle asymmetric bundle. I remember uh, Iraq, actually Dr. Sama Marwada, uh, Corona specialist at the Iraq, and uh, published several uh, several papers, at least one journal, actually journal paper, is computing radio interference uh, by treating every subconductor in the bundle as a separate conductors. In our phase program, it can be done easily. Also, the symmetric bundle, a symmetric bundle. Okay. That is, say, it's a phase is very unique and efficient. Typical application areas of the phase uh, or similar a similar program is uh, existing transmission line study or monitoring or any configuration changes, uh, ACDC or ACDC transmission line design and uh, converting AC to DC, vice versa. So, so far, we don't have any standard to follow, but we do have IEEE recommendation to follow. And uh, for licensing, when you design Chinese line, it's largely depends on the government acknowledgement. As far as I know, <coughs> from a journal paper written by Dr. Orson, uh, the author of the Red Book, Every Red Book uh, described the Washington State uh, code for the transmission line uh, limit. So they classified uh, three areas. One is residential and uh, industry and uh, public uh, areas, and they set up limit uh for daytime and nighttime that's the only i have seen an impressive code and available in the journal paper 
That is typical application area. Now, we're going to, I'm going to hand it to Dexter, talk about the face graphic user interface. Okay. Thank you, Wujin. Hello, everyone. So I'm going to give you a quick introductory use of the GUI for face. Um, I'm going to run a part of the video you received just to identify the different windows of face. And then I will go over a couple of examples of how to use it. And then I'll build a simple case to demonstrate how you can quickly build a case with face. So now that we've seen the basic outline of the face interface, I will launch face. So you can see that we have the face launched with the example cases that, you, that come with the program. So as we were seeing in that short video, we can see each of the different circuits and we can see the actual circuits that they belong to here as well as their position. Oops, sorry. So we can select the circuit that we would like, and you can see the circuit here. You can see their XY coordinates of all of the bundles, and you can also introduce the sag of the conductor. And you also see the voltages as well. We can further go down and see the bundle information as well here. And you can see the number of conductors, the orientation, and the spacing. So that this is a simple AC case. I'll show you a DC case as well. So there's a simple DC case. And you can see we can pick the circuits as well in this same as well. We can also select the bundles directly from the graphic interface as well. As well with the conductor geometry, we can select each of the conductors independently in the bundle. So let's run a couple of cases here. So I'll run this first AC case and we'll see the output of the plots. So you can see here we've completed the run of the system. And now we can see that we can get the information for the surface gradients, audible noise, corona loss, AC field, magnetic field, radio interference. And we, as this is a D AC system, there should be no DC field or ionized field. So let's look at a simple DC case. I will run this one as well. Now we can, we want to see the, the ionized field. So right here we have the ability to enable or disable um, calculations for the ionized field. It was first off right now, so we'll have it, but let's run it with the ionized field calculations. So you can see it is processing the ionized field computation right now. 
So we'll just give it a few seconds to complete this. So while this is building, we can just look at some of the parameters for the system. So we have the case information here. We can set up some of the frequency dependent parameters for the AC line, as well as we can set up parameters for the audible noise. We can set up what type of algorithm we want to use for audible noise calculations as well as corona loss, and as well for the electric, electric and magnetic fields and radio interference as well here. So we see now we've completed the calculation for the DC case, so we can go through the plotting information. We can see the surface gradient information here, audible noise, corona loss, AC field, magnetic, radio interference, and as we have now enabled the ionized field computation, we can see the DC field as this is a DC system and the ionized field. The graphic allows one more thing to note about the graphics. You can actually as well zoom in, pan and zoom on the image. Can also reset back to the original. We can enable and disable the plots that we want to see. It also has the capability of exporting these plots into images as well as into Excel and Word data formats. So what I'll do now is I'll go through building a simple case. So let's create a new workspace. not going to save the changes. So we have a new workspace. I'll create a new case. So now we have the basic system here. So let's say we're just going to create a AC and DC hybrid case here. So we could create a simple three bundle system for the AC by selecting one of the bundle formats up here. You can see them selected above here. So let's pick a simple one, a three conductor here. It's an AC system. We want two ground conductors. We're going to use 345 volt uh, AC. And we'll leave the other parameters for the DC resistance and the following below. And you can see that it has produced the bundles for all of the AC conductors. So let's modify these bundles. Let's make them uh, three conductor bundles. So we can go right here, we can select it, and we can now go up here and add a conductor, add another conductor, and see we have a three, three bundle symmetric conductor, or three conductors three bundle conductors. So we can go to the next one and repeat the process. And then we can go to the last one and repeat the process as well. We'll leave the ground conductors as single in this case. So that's our AC system. So let's create a DC system of just two conductors with no ground conductors. So I can select this one here. 
And we can see that right now it's set as a DC, but we could also set it as an AC, but in our case, we want it as DC. So let's go DC 500. And we'll place that onto our system. However, let's change the orientation slightly. Let's move the DC system to the right, let's say by 20 meters. So we can pick the first conductor here and we wanna move it in the X by 20. So let's change that to 15 here. And then change here to 25 and move it. So now we have the two AC and DC systems. So we could do the similar thing with the bundles as well for the DC. And let's just create it as a two conductor bundle. So we can add another bundle here and we can add another bundle here. As you can see, we can always set the spacing right here as well for the, the bundle. So, now we've created our simple case and we can now compile this case. Um, one moment. So for speed this time, I'm not gonna do the ionized field computation. I'll just turn that off and we will compile the case. So we've completed the case. We can see the surface gradient for the conductors, for the system, we get our audible noise, AC field, our magnetic field. Oh, yes, you, you enter. Yeah, so in this case, we have zero current running. And so if we look at the data, we have zero current in our conductor. So we're not gonna have any magnetic field. Um, here's our radio interference, our DC field, and because I've turned off ionized field, we don't have the ionized field. Okay, so that's the graphic user interface for FACE. I hope this gave you a quick introduction on how to use the graphical user interface. I'll now pass things back over to Wujin to continue with the presentation. Okay, so good job. It's a... Uh... <clears throat> Okay, that's fine. Uh, ionized field computation is one of big challenges for commercializing such a kind of pro program. And it requires uh, to solve several hundred, even several thousand of nonlinear uh, problems. So continuously so. So that is kind of challenging and the most time consuming part, uh, we have managed uh, the performance uh, of the ion field computation to make it faster and uh, it usually takes about five uh, or, or so. Uh, it's, we'll explain later here through the examples and uh, validations we performed through the course of uh, phase development. So once we talk about the corona and field and the corona performance, the first thing we have to make sure is surface gradient is correct. Because this surface gradient is used for everything, AN, R, 
radio interference of coronal loss and actually ionized field is used the surface gradient. So it's very important to validate this result first. So we have followed at the uh, committee uh, papers uh, published in 1971. And just quickly show you what we got there. Okay. So that is uh, it's 13 cases. The maximum error we got here is only one case here because it's double circuit. We don't have a detailed phasing from this. So that's the only concern. We also compared uh, the another uh, atrophy committee paper. Okay, it is a 20 AC including four DC case. So again, we have some issue to reproduce, uh, reproduce the surface gradient for that case only. And the maximum error here, we can observe is three, it's absolute difference, it's not percentage. And DC case, we have some issue to reproduce this result. Otherwise, it's everything looks okay. And uh, the other one, I, I'm not going to show you this detail. It's because uh, we'll have to bring this uh, spreadsheet later again. So the other one is uh, audible noise. So one of the concern is how accurate our uh, face result. So let's bring up. Oh, oops. okay. Okay, I mixed up here. That is a surface gradient for the given case. And that is audible noise. The maximum error excluding this one and the case, the case 15, which DC case, uh, the maximum error we have is 3 dBA. And here, excluding this one, because it's uh, produced wrong surface gradient, the difference is 6.4. Otherwise, it's very close. Uh, maximum produce is 3.9. So that is main difference. We also compare it to the BPA free software. Uh, we got it, uh, we got it, the result from Tashmont. So I'm not going to show you the, because we don't have quantitative uh, comparison for this one. So that is for audible noise case. Audible noise actually is a simple empirical formula that uses uh, surface gradient. As long as your surface gradient is right, and then it should be, uh, a, a, there should be a, no problem producing the correct audible noise. Radio interference computation is one of them. So here's a, another IEEE paper written by the Robert Olson. He is a one of the author of the every red book. Uh, second and the third edition on the EMA chapter. So, here's a face, uh, okay, here's a face result. What we can show you is a maximum error is given by maximum error, you can see it's here, 6.83.
TB. And look at the every product, every uh, result. It gives uh, quite big ones, uh, 9.7. So that is without any optimization. For our basic study, we performed here is uh, after optimization. We can get one is six point. That is uh, for Iraqi model or oh, EDF model. Okay. And others after optimization, as you can see, is greatly reduced. Uh, so that gonna be uh, include the next lesson. So that's all about uh, radio interference. And we also compared to BPA software result. Uh, we got these result early, I think it's around 2006. So the AC case or eight DC cases. So actually, I'd like to say is there's a no comparison. There's a no way to compare because we are different using different algorithm. So we're using the model transfer model transfer technique, but BPA in this they have a simplified somewhere between the you know the empirical formula and then simplified. Uh, model, uh, clock change form techniques, and uh, so from my point of view, there is no point to compare. So this static and the magnetic field, as I said, as long as uh, the surface gradient is correct, it should be uh, produce correct result for static field. And uh, magnetic field because it's uh, internally using the same algorithms. Uh, just quickly skip this uh, result here. The last one, actually, the most challenging one is ionized field computation. Okay, the theory can bring up from online help. So it's a mixed verification uh, defined <coughs> cross section of the tennis line with the that is assumption we can simplify two dimensional problem to one dimensional uh, one dimensional problem so reduce one order of dimension. Uh, the uniqueness is defined by the boundary condition that is voltage and uh, surface of uh, surface of the conductors and the ground plan, which is zero. <coughs> so that it depends uniqueness of the uh, uniqueness of the nonlinear program. So validation examples we performed for my double hydro bipole one and bipole two. Uh, cases, okay, geometry is uh, given uh, right here. The so pole one, pole two, pole three, pole four. Operating point, we selected these two cases. So this one is bipole model. This is monopole model, the first case. And the second one, the uh, pole four acting as shading wire. Case two is two bipole model. Mode. So, case one, <coughs> we have plotted it I trajectory. Uh, measuring point is set at the ground level. So, the first step is to find I trajectory. And the next way equation is become one dimensional program along each the I trajectories. So, challenge is to so to find these ion trajectories first, and it requires you have to 
cross the measuring point and it must start from energized conductor. So you can see it's at this point is uh, pole four is acting as shading wire. So you can see something different here. And uh, validation compared to the measure data at the ground level, and dashed line is a static field, and the solid line is computed ionized field. You can see here it's shading effect. Uh, no coronating, no ionizing actually at the somewhere here, which is we expected to see. And here too, the same, same uh, phenomenon we can observe. <coughs> Case two, we also plotted the ion trajectory measuring height is at the 1.5 meters above the ground too. Okay. So each line is nonlinear two point initial value uh, problem. So you have to effectively solve one by one from somewhere, maybe from right point and left point and continue to solve that is one of the technical challenges for you know uh commercializing such a kind of uh, uh program uh we have we developed this implement this pro uh, this algorithm in 2007 and after that we extensively used for you know, practical work, uh, consulting work, and personally, I haven't uh, experienced any single issue with the ionized field computation. So it's proven to be efficient and powerful uh, algorithms. So this is electric field profile at the ground level for case two. And these data measure data. And again, the ionized enhanced by corona is significant, you can tell from here. Okay. And also you can observe here. So another difficulty for commercializing such kind of software is when you're increasing the measuring height is the the problem uh, is more complicated you have to solve so-called dipole mode which is this model so Negative ions, let's say this is a negative pole and the positive one. So negative ions is moving along each line, positive ion moving along this line. So in between the combination is a curse. So this behavior actually we can observe from here. So when you're increasing the measuring height, the combination area has become wider and wider between you know positive and negative. And you can observe from here too. So those are exactly what we want to see. Okay, so that is all about the phase program. For the last, I'd like to present a demo to show you to show you the robustness of the ACDC uh, ionized field computations. Uh, to quickly review the graphic user interface, you have a workspace and 
circuit, uh, circuit data. And you can also navigate it from here too. And bundle geometry. Let's say copy to here. Yeah. Now, actually the above, okay, the above examples is the real world examples. This AC is somewhere in the state, United States and this is somewhere from uh, European countries. So this is actually, I created when I practicing the graphic user interface and uh, Amazingly, it still solves the final dispute. Okay. Okay, so here's the information. Computing this ion as a field, X position and Y position. It's a total point 323. So as I said, the efficiency is Somehow it's dependent on the number of the, you know, and the number of points along the each trajectory. With some way effectively managed below uh, 500 points. And here you can see all the numbers computer result here. It, you know, still solves this kind of uh, complicated geometry stuff. So it's kind of slow because uh, I believe it internally it's working hard to find the, all the trajectory and find this, the, the, the nonlinear solution problem. So I just stop here. Uh, okay. So plotting. Surface gradient for all conductors, okay, and uh, audible noise for combined AC and DC case. Corona rows two AC field. It's from minus two fifty. Uh, magnetic field is still solved. Importantly, is to see these ionized field computations. It still gives some value, but uh, uh, I can't verify. So that's all about, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask so we can answer you. Okay, so some you know, comments here. The uh, base modular allow users to look in a set of equations. Make sure equations be required. Modified equations. The face modular. Uh, how can I type? Actually, I don't know how to answer uh, these questions. Uh, Don't think so. I don't think so. But we have plan in the future to for users to modify the generation functions for audible noise and uh, you know gradient interference stuff. Uh, I don't think you have options. You you are able to modify the next ray equations used internally. Okay. Up. 
Yes, we look at we're looking at adding that kind of feature in future releases. So you'll have to stay tuned to see when we'll be able to get that. Next one is this means the face can be used only for 1D computers like FEM, but 2D and 3D. Okay, it's a uh, strictly it's a two dimensional program. It's dealing with the cross sectional cross section of the Chinese line. So we did some research on the 2D uh, numerical program, numerical solver like FEM stuff and boundary element method stuff, but from the computation performance, okay, we select carefully chosen this algorithm. And we believe this is advanced and produce quick, quickly the ionized field computation result. So, so the answer is yes. It's a it's a two D two D problem but internally uh, used 1D algorithm with the Dutch assumption. Okay, the la what's the next one? No, that's different. Altitude is above the, uh, sea, le uh, above the sea level we can get from, you know, uh, somewhere, but uh, height, measuring height, it's just between ground level and conductors. Okay. What do you say? We. Okay. One in GUI magnetic field for data unit, match data from unit. Now, actually, you have uh, options to select uh, metric and imperial. Okay. I'll show you. Okay. So, here you can change imperial, metric and uh, imperial. And if you select imperial, Every protein is the unit is corresponding to that. You selected a unit. Two in the GUI white binder spacing specified per subconductor. Per subconductor. So this should be set. Okay, so here. We're strictly dealing with the symmetric ones, symmetric bundle. So that's why we set here. Uh, that's the way the GUI is designed. Okay. <clears throat> calculus for DC magnetic field calculation. Is it possible to calculate the non source? East West component of the horizontal field due to combination field from conductor current, non round orientation, and for Earth state field. In calculation for the DC magnetic field, at least it's possible to calculate the source East West component. Conductor components of the field. Right, thank you. Okay. So we have, okay, that V is magnitude of the magnetic field, and that's X component, and that is Y component. 
and uh, is it possible to calculate the loss where this risk component? Hmm? Actually, I didn't get your point. Uh, the north source and east west component of the horizontal field gain. Okay. Only I can say is the magnitude, because it's a vector, uh, we produce the uh, magnitude of the magnetic field and x component, the y component. Okay. And uh, what's the last two questions? Uh, it's to waste the field to do to compromise the current non graph on this from the Earth static field. This is interesting to look to know to determine compass. Oh, that is, I have. Already couple of questions. Is it visible? Asked. Uh, I have already a couple of questions. Is it visible? Yes, we are going through actually. Can we see what equation phase is? Yes, everything you can go to online, online help, uh, okay. The first section is graphic user interface. And the last one is technical guide. So old information uh, formulas you can find from online help, okay. And everything, including this AN formula and the radio interference formula, we can find the information from online help. And uh, the accuracy can make calculate corresponding losses directly as well. Uh, corona loss. So the question is can we calculate corresponding losses directly as well? Uh, not right now. Uh, we're using empirical formula right now. It's depending on the feature. It's uh, uh, depends on the customer requirement. Okay. So the accuracy seems to be low for DC application. Why is it so? The accuracy seems to be low. What that mean? Accuracy seems to be. Thank you. Need to go. Okay. So if you have any concern, the author is uh, Tomri Kamoker. If you have any concern about the accuracy of the DC, you can send me an email to our support or whatever, so we can further communicate. Any other? Okay, okay. So, any further questions? When a new license will I get face force? Uh, or what do you mean license? Or face need to burn? Yes, uh, face is a separate product uh, in the purchase, the, the face license. So you can send the information to uh, our sales team and support team, they can answer you for details. So for the licensing, it's similar to the online licensing that we have for PSCAD, where you can log into the My Updater 
once you have purchased the license and you will be able to run base from there. But we do offer a, a trial that you would be able to take a look at the software if you would like to see it. Okay, so any other questions? Okay, so here's a, here's a face applicable also to HVDC cables or only to, yeah, it's uh, only for overhead transmission line because there's no, uh, no, no, no INC stuff for underground cables. For the trial versions, you can send, uh, you can send us, you know, to the support. You can find informations. Uh, just send our, uh, send it to our sales or support for trial lessons. Okay. Where in this? I yes, okay. just send the, any request to base support mhi or base base sales at mhi ca. Uh, well, it says uh, I Nigerian occurs pre and post breakdown. So I didn't get it that point. So uh, and, and it is good to know that it's only four. Yes, we call it the same. Is that good? Now we will post the, the recorded seminar. YouTube, okay. Okay. So it's a YouTube, you search, to go to the YouTube and search PSK, you'll find the, the recorded version of this webinar. Can you progress? PSK the model for Corona. That's a future. Uh, case. Can you? Uh, the question is: Can you provide us the PSK the model for Corona? Uh, not right now, but uh, many concerns are coming, and uh, I believe in the future, maybe. But uh, now it's not. Okay, so it looks like that's all. Thanks everybody for participating. And uh, we appreciate very much everything, your comments and your time too. Thank you.